Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. I have been on a sci-fi kick terrain making lately and uh, I'm winding it down but one of the things I've been wanting to do is to try and experiment with different um, techniques for making things. One of my favorite materials to use is chipboard. But chipboard is about, it's a little less than an eighth of an inch thick and it, it doesn't bend well. And of course it's paper, so if it gets wet, uh, it will soften, but it also will start sort of bubbling up and pulping and it just doesn't look good. So in this episode, I wanna show you a new piece of sci-fi scatter terrain that I created for the desktop. I use a technique of slicing the chipboard, not all the way through so you can score it. But if you do these in, in enough thin strips, the chipboard will actually curve quite easily. And there's two different thicknesses that I of, of uh, slices that I do for this project. So if you look carefully, you'll see one is like um, about three eighths of an inch and another one is one eighth of an inch. And they give you different flexibility depending on, uh, obviously the thinner, the one eighth one is very flexible versus the three eighths, which is not. But anyway, let's get to the work table and I'll show you the newest creation sci-fi piece of terrain and I uh, hope you like it. I began this project with a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of chipboard. I cut it in half and one of the six by 12 inch pieces is what I'm going to use to draw two partial circles. They're about three inches diameter, so, or three inches uh, radius, so almost six inches diameter. You draw one on one side and measure your center point for your compass from one end and then flip it around and do the same from the other side so that the circles are roughly the same, or exactly the same size. Then you're gonna draw a series of lines one of these lines is going to cut the top one inch or so off of the circle to make a flat roof, all right? Then what you're going to do is you're gonna connect the corners of those lines that you just drew to make the roof. And then when you cut away all of these bits, you're gonna have a curved wall, then a roof connecting the curved wall to the other uh, semicircle, as you'll see right here. So I'm just cutting apart these pieces, and then what I'll do is I'll score the line that, that is where the ceiling or the roof meets the, uh, the faces, the circle, uh, circular walls. And then I fold it down and that will make the roof and the two, the front and the back, the two facing edges of the structure. So here I am, uh, here I am cutting it. Then what I did was I cut a couple pieces of foam and just glued them in and this basically allowed me to square the walls with the roof. They're 90 degrees so you just glue them in. And then I put glue on the bottom of the, uh, the circular walls and glued it down to a piece of chipboard and then cut everything away. Next it's time to make the actual wall. So what I did was I, I bent a piece of chipboard to get a measurement of that curve. And then I added one inch to that measurement and cut a six inch by, it was about five inches. And then I scored it every three eighths of an inch. And this will allow you to create a curved wall, as you can see right here. Before I glued it on, however, I cut a two inch by two and a half inch doorway out of one side. And then I cut another piece of chipboard, just slightly larger than that two by two and a half. And I scored it every one eighth of an inch. And this creates sort of a curved door that would roll up into the wall and I glued it onto the back of the larger curved wall, as you can see right here. Then just put some hot glue on the two curved edges and glue it into place, hold it, let that glue cool, and you'll end up with one wall. Do the exact same thing for the other side. Now, while, after those two walls are put up, it's time to cr start creating uh, the other details. So what I did was I created a larger rolling wall for the front and back faces of this structure and I scored them every one eighth inch. Even though they're not curved and they're not going to um, be bent, that, that will allow it to look like a, a rolling uh, wall that would roll up. So here I am folding it up and then uh, scoring it just a little few extra times and I glue it into place. To make that look a little more realistic, I just added a piece of dowel for a roller. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini-adventures, new monsters, and much more. 
Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. Next, it's time to just add some decorative pieces. Um, this is just based on what you want the final structure to look like. What I did was I just took pieces of rectangular uh, chipboard and just cut them and glued them uh, into place in various places. And then I'd glue another piece on top of another piece. It just adds a three-dimensional element. It makes the structure look real. So there'll be shadows and there'll be reliefs and things like that. Here you can see me just gluing some squares along the top portion of the two curved walls. Then I went and added uh, some, some pieces on the side. I cut an angled section out of it to give it sort of a science fiction-y look. Uh, a lot, you'll see a lot of Star Wars, um, <laughs> uh, Star Wars ships and things use this technique of cutting a shape and then cut a strip out. So there's the one piece. And then in just a second, you'll see me take the second piece and glue it on, and there'll be this gap in between them. And this piece began as nothing but a square. And do it to the other side as well. Everything is symmetric on this, by the way. Front and back are symmetrical, and the two sides are symmetrical. Here, I decided to add a piece over the rolling door. It's just a long piece of chipboard, rectangular shape, with a smaller piece of chipboard glued across it. And again, it's nothing fancy, but it just gives it a three-dimensional look. I added some control panels for the sides of the larger doors. You could add these to the smaller doors, but I only added them for the larger ones. I added uh, some random junk bits from my junk drawer that were circular in, in uh, nature. And then I painted the entire thing a flat gray. After the gray dried, I added this uh, color called Midnight Blue for the sides, only the sides. And then I hit all of the doors with a metallic silver, uh, plus um, I added this copper mesh, which is called embroidery mesh. I added a piece of copper color to the very top, just used tacky glue to hold it in place. Now the metallic glue, uh, the metallic paint that I used on the doors, I also added, I painted the top little squares that are visual elements on the top of the walls. I also used the silver on the control panel as well. I took a dark gray called pavement and painted that side uh, visual piece, both pieces, being careful not to hit the blue that runs down the gap. And then the final piece to sort of make it look a little more realistic was I took a piece of small chain and I glued it at the top of each of the rollers, uh, something that you would like pull to make the door roll up. And then here is the final piece. I may go and add something later to the sidewalls. They look a little plain right now, but I'm not quite sure what I want there. But I definitely need to, uh, to add something. There's something missing. And I'll probably weather it later on. All right, so there you go. It's not uh, it's not the most crazy, uh, complex looking object, but I do like the curve uh, that is in here, and I like the the rolling doors. I added the chain, like you would pull it to raise it. So um, just uh, I, I, it's it's a nice color scheme too. This blue that uh, I picked out is called. Let me see if I can find it for you. It's called Midnight Dream. It is one of the plaid uh, folk, uh, not folk art, it's Delta. It's one of the Delta paints from plaid. But uh, really nice, nice looking uh, color for a military or sci-fi uh, sci item right here. All right, that's all I have for you in this episode. Uh, please come and join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. Also, please come join me and my fe five fellow guild masters over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild. We are over 35,000 members strong, and it's a great place for you to post your questions, share photos of your projects, answer questions, and just we discuss all kinds of stuff that's terrain related. Lastly, uh, if you like this video and would like access to all of my videos earlier than when they hit YouTube, please consider becoming a patron of mine by visiting uh, patreon.com 
slash the tabletop engineer. I'll put all this information in the description below. But for $1 a month, you'll gain access to all of my videos uh, weeks or even more uh, over a month early than before they hit YouTube. I do live crafting sessions that you'll be invited to. I do live miniature painting sessions uh, that, that you are welcome to join. I do giveaways. I have PDF uploads, all kinds of stuff. It's just $1 a month and your support allows me to continue to make videos and create content for you gamers. All right, that's it. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I'll be back with a new episode next week. Take care.